Welcome back to Aurora Tech Channel. Today, I'm going to review this Two Trees TTS55 laser engraver. It comes with a 5 watt laser module and the working area is 300 by 300, which is a bit smaller than other regular desktop engravers. It comes with an ESP32 Wi-Fi module that allows you to use the web interface or the mobile app to control the machine. As of today, the price of this machine is $279 on Amazon, making it one of the cheapest 5 watt laser engravers available. I would like to thank Two Trees for sending me this machine to review, and with that, let's get started. This machine is similar to all other desktop engravers. The assembly is pretty simple, and it would take around 20 minutes to put everything together. First, let's set up the machine. I'm using a honeycomb bed to protect my table and placing it between the working material and the table. To set the focus of the laser module, use the metal cylinder that came with the machine. Remove the acrylic protector from the module, put the cylinder between the laser module and the material, and turn the thumb screw to adjust the distance. Okay, I will also put on my laser tent and connect a fan duct to exhaust the smoke when engraving wood. I also put some LED lights inside. This machine supports Wi-Fi, but it doesn't come with a touch screen, so you still need to connect the USB cable to your computer to enter the SSID and password of the network. Inside the SD card, there is a folder called MKS Laser Tool, and we're going to install this program. Somehow, the characters are in another language, but you can just press enter like most other programs you install in Windows. Okay. The interface is really simple. The only one we need is the Wi-Fi configuration tool. Select the COM port of your machine. In my case, it's COM12. If the console shows OK, the machine is connected, and we can just type in the SSID and password and click Connect Wi-Fi. Click Get IP, and the IP address will show up here. Open the browser and enter this address. We can use the arrow key to move the laser module or click home to return to the corner. By default, the home position will be the position when you turn on the machine. We can browse the files on the SD card. Let's try to start with the sample file. Let's click on the frame button and show a preview on the machine. It's going to read the file and determine the working area, and we can now click send. The machine is going to draw the working area. It fits on the material, so we can start the job. It looks like the power is too much for this plywood, and I just realized that this file is for a 2.5 watt laser, which is why the wood is burned a bit too much. Just let it finish and we'll see how it looks. It's not too bad, except that the edges are too dark. In this case, if we want to use this file, we have two options, increase the speed or turn down the power. But with my limited Chinese, I can only read a few simple words. So I will just copy these words to Google Translate, and here we are. The first one is feed rate, and the second one is power. I will increase the feed rate to 200% and try again with the same file. This time it looks beautiful. The edges are super clean, and I'm very happy with this result. In order to find the optimal speed and power on plywood, I will engrave this using 5000 millimeters per minute with different power. Since I also want to test out the Wi-Fi feature, I will save it as a G-code file, and then use the web interface to upload it to the machine. Since the file is small, it only took a few seconds. Let's draw a preview frame to make sure the position is inside the working area. Okay, it looks good, and we can start the job. When engraving at 5,000 millimeters per minute with 70% power or more may be a little bit too much, as the top speed of this machine can reach 10,000 millimeters per minute. So I will speed it up to 10,000 millimeters per minute and do the same test again. 
It looks much better and we can see the different darkness as the power increases. So I would say this machine is fully capable of engraving at 10,000 millimeters per minute. Next, let's try some cutting. I will use 100% power with different speeds, starting with 500 millimeters per minute down to 100 millimeters per minute and see which speed can cut through this three millimeter plywood completely. At 250 millimeters per minute, the edges are not super clean, so it should be fine with 200 millimeters per minute when cutting some simple shapes and may require a slightly slower speed at 150 millimeters per minute for more detailed cuts. Generally, a 5 watt laser module should be able to cut through a quarter inch solid board, which is around 6.35 millimeters in one pass. I will use this poplar wood board to do a cutting test. I will start with cutting at 75 millimeters per minute to cut this board in half. It's quite clean with just a little snap. Then I will cut a few small squares at different speeds. For detailed cuts, it requires being slowed down to 50 millimeters per minute to completely cut through the board. Next, let's try photo engraving. I will use light burn to engrave this zebra photo at 8,000 millimeters per minute and 100% power, and then use another operation to cut it out at 150 millimeters per minute. For photo engraving, the G-code file will be much larger. I will see if this Wi-Fi module can also handle this. As you can see, the file is over 24 megabytes, which is quite large. I will see how much time is needed to send it over Wi-Fi and let the main board write to the SD card using the serial port. It has been a while, taking 3 minutes and 12 seconds. When I try to draw the preview frame, it also takes a while as it's going to read the G-code file from start to finish to calculate the frame, taking another 2 minutes and 49 seconds. Okay, it's finally done. Let's draw the frame and it looks good to me so I will just start the job. It took one hour and nine minutes to engrave this zebra, which almost used the entire 300 mm by 200 mm plywood. But the result seems pretty nice. The detail between the black and white hairs are clear. Finally, I will try to engrave a logo on a stainless steel sheet. It looks really nice, the lines are clear, and the result is even better than engraving on wood. Okay, let's talk about what I think of this machine. First, it was one of the most affordable engravers in the market with Wi-Fi support. The Wi-Fi is not perfect, but it can complete most jobs without issues, apart from photo engraving jobs with large files. The frame is rigid, and this machine came with a dual Y-axis, which is better than other machines that only use one stepper motor to move the gantry. It uses a switch as the power button, and it can also work as an emergency switch that cuts off the power immediately if anything goes wrong. It also has nice cable management with a few extra brackets and two cable looms to make sure the cable doesn't get in the way when the machine is working. It uses a thumb screw to adjust the height of the laser module to set the focus, which is more convenient than using screws. There are quite a lot of injection mold brackets on the machine, and they are used as the legs and to hold the x-axis. The metal cylinder with different steps is also convenient to use when working with different materials. However, I would like to suggest a few improvements to the manufacturer or maker base. Maker base is the maker of the control board, and they need some updates in the firmware. For example, some translations are not done yet, like the feed rate and power label on the web interface, which can be fixed easily. For uploading large files, it took a bit too long, but it was limited by the serial port of the motherboard to connect with the SD card to write the file. This is a common issue for most other laser engravers or 3D printers that support Wi-Fi. Another issue with the Wi-Fi web interface is that it took too long to draw the preview frame. 
For files generated by Lightburn, there is a comment line at the beginning of the file defining the boundary. On other machines with a touch screen, it can just read the line without loading the whole file to draw the preview frame, which then only takes a few seconds. So the web interface could also have the same feature. The 5W laser module is in line with other machines that use the same power. It's not ideal for cutting, but it can definitely handle engraving pretty well and do some light cuttings. If you want to cut thicker materials in a single pass, you may need to consider getting a 10W laser module. Besides that, I would still consider this to be a solid machine. When you buy other machines in the same price range without the Wi-Fi feature, they still cost the same. But this Two Trees TTS55 has a fairly functional Wi-Fi feature that could avoid you having to connect the USB cable to the computer about 90% of the time, which is pretty handy. If you are interested in this machine, I put the link down below as well as my laser tent setup, honeycomb bed, and other 3D printed parts for the fan duct. That's it for this video. If you like this video, please hit the like and subscribe button. My brother and I make a new video every weekend, so check out my channel on Mondays and you'll see something new. See you next week.